Hi, my name is Dave Farnia, and in this webinar I will introduce some of the new features in JMEG Designer version 15. Version 15 was released in January of 2016 with a focus on improving usability. Numerous requests came from customers working on parametric analyses and more specifically users working on optimization. Version 15 has improved many features involved with setting up multiple models, from geometry creation to post-processing. We have also added a multi-objective optimization engine. Your feedback is critical to our development efforts, so I would encourage you to send us your comments and suggestions. Before getting too deep into this presentation, I want to mention that the raw document is available on the JMEG website. So let's cut to the JMEG International website. You can find the PDF version of this presentation under the Downloads Software JMEG Designer tab. In the Products tab, you'll also notice that we have videos for both JMEG Designer and JMEG Express. Videos created for version 15 are designated with the orange updated marker next to their function at list. I would highly encourage you to check the website both for the PDF version of this presentation and to view some of the videos that are created for the updated functionality. Now let's get back to the presentation. So the rest of this presentation will discuss geometry creation, condition setting, mesh improvements, solver modifications, post-processing, parametric analyses, optimization, and JMEG Explorer. Starting with Geometry Creation version 15 adds a startup guide that will appear when you first open JMEG Designer. In the Geometry Editor, you can now perform Boolean patterns, enter formulas and variables in the integer dialogs, add models to a geometry library, and merge multiple geometry files. In general, we work to improve how JMEG generates and applies geometry constraints. In terms of modeling, JMEG has added a separate zooming analysis which allows you to model a small portion of a complex model and incorporate that into a simplified version of that full model. JMEG has also added features to model hysteresis behavior and provided feedback on the quality of custom BH curves. In addition to custom material settings, there are also many new material entries from our material partners. When working on a transformer model, the transformer analysis tool now allows arbitrary wire positioning. In electric field analyses, you can use a higher order element. And finally, the structural analysis tool can now account for initial stress in an eigenvalue analysis. We've also improved the abacus coupling in our structural analysis as well. As far as the mesher goes, you can now specify a split direction in a thin solid mesh and create unequally spaced divisions in a manual mesh. We have also made many improvements in our post-processing tools to make them both easier to use and visually better. Graphs will have more data and easier customization settings. The Fourier transform function is easier to set and store results. You can also create custom formulas and add them to your response graph. If you're calculating an external magnetic field, you can now plot the results at arbitrary points. We also add an automatic calculation for resistance, flux linkage, and inductance of coils and conductors. Lastly, you can now output a CSV file with circuit results. If you're working with parametric models, you will find improvements in the case control settings, including a batch label setting function. You can also more easily set parametric geometry values. If you're changing a value in a parametric study, JMEG will automatically add a case instead of just duplicating the study or deleting those results. The case settings are now supporting formulas and the use of point sequences as parameters. Lastly, you can set a physical point as a parameter. As I mentioned earlier, we have been working hard to improve optimization inside of JMAG Designer. This led to the development of a multi-objective optimization engine and a link with MATLAB's optimization toolbox. We have also improved the monitor window and added a correlation matrix and a Pareto curve display. In terms of distributed processing for parametric models, you can now perform batch jobs from JMEG Scheduler. It is also a lot easier to set simultaneous jobs and confirm the job state from the client machine. With all the data being generated, we've made some improvements to JMEG Explorer. JMEG Explorer allows you to preview a model and quickly delete multiple files from, and results from your computer. We've been making many improvements in our Iron Loss tool, but you can also create your own Iron Loss expression and apply this to the model. Power supply customization has also been improved. And since the number of customers using scripts has increased, we've improved the script section in our user manual. For JMEG RT, we added a third order spline approximation for the spatial harmonic model and added a leakage inductance correction. JMEG Express is a source of continued development with an end goal of having a quick and simple way to design and set up motors. JMEG Express now includes the end ring cross section for induction machines, as well as changing between different stators and rotors will be a lot easier in version 15. Lastly, dimensions will have an improved display, and you can control the number of decimal places in that display. As you can see, we've added a lot of new features to version 15. 
Since our time is limited, I would like to use this webinar to talk about specific features. At the same time, I would encourage you to take a look at the full document online. Again, we're always available to answer questions. So at this point, I'll switch over to JMAG Designer. So now when we start JMAG Designer version 15, we'll see a pop-up showing tutorials, help files, recent files option, a CAD link, and geometry creation options. If you select New Motor Model, it will ask you to save the project file, and then it'll open JMAG Express. This will link JMAG Designer with JMAG Express. Of course, you can still open JMAG Express separately, as I will do now. Okay, I've just opened JMAG Express version 8.0. Now again, it looks fairly similar to what we saw in previous versions of JMAG Express, but let's look at the default three-phase induction machine to check out some of the differences between this new version of JMAG Express and previous versions. Once we open the three-phase induction machine model, again, it looks fairly similar to what we had been working with before. We have our File, Edit, View tabs, but now we have a template tab. In this template tab, this is where we can go to modify our units as well as the decimal accuracy of our dimensions. The template tab is also where we can register this model to our database and manage our database. I should mention that you don't have to rely strictly on the database in order to ma modify custom templates. If I go to File and then Save As, I can save this template file to any user-defined folder. So now I can treat JMEG Express template models like I would do JMEG Designer project files, and I can move them around and customize them as I would want to do. If I go to the Dimensions tab, the big difference is now if I click on a dimension, they show up in red, so it makes it a little bit easier to identify what dimensions I'm working with. Another big feature is that if I go to my stator or rotor geometry and I change them, JMEG Express will try to hold the geometry as close as it can to the existing geometry. So I don't have to go back through and try to modify all the dimensions again when I change my rotor or stator configuration. The other addition is that in the induction machine we have the ability to change the cross-sectional area of our end ring to make it a little bit more accurate. The materials tab really hasn't changed all that much. And the big addition to the windings tab is that now we have a slot diagram so we can go through and get a little bit better visual identification for our winding pattern. So if I go back in to my Drive tab and set the Drive conditions, I can then solve my model. The results display is shown below. One of the features that I want to mention here that's not new to version 15 but comes up a lot in questions is that there is an ability to edit the display for my results. If I click on my Edit Characteristics or go to Characteristics and then Edit Characteristics, I can go in and I can change my graphs. So I can change the X and the Y axis of the graph, I can change the way that they're displayed, and I can even hide or add different graphs if I want to get different sets of results. In my actual numerical results, I can choose whether or not I want to display certain factors. So again, I can customize my result display and turn it into what I want to see instead of the default on what JMAG thinks. When I've gone through and I've set up and customized my results display, I can also go back to my template and register this result display to my database. So I can say write report layout and then I can apply that report layout to any future design that I would be working with. So by doing this again it allows me a lot more customization capabilities within JMAG Express. So I can create a custom report, I can share that report with other people that I'm working with, or I can use it on any other machine model that I'd be working on. So at this point that kind of covers some of the new features that we have in JMAG Express version 8.0. So I'm going to go back over to JMAG Designer and demonstrate some of the features in JMAG Designer. So I've gone back into JMAG Designer and I've saved this model as my Boolean geometry. So typically what I would do is I'd right click on my project and I'd go to Geometry Editor and I'd create a geometry. This would open up my Geometry Editor and I would then add a sketch. For this sketch I just want to do a simple circle and turn that into a region. What I want to do is I want to add smaller circles around the circumference of this. So if I click OK and then try to create that smaller circle as a region, previously what we'd have is overlapping regions. But in JMAG Designer version 15 it'll now bring up my Boolean dialog which will allow me to either do a union, subtraction, or an intersection over those two different regions. So I want to do a subtraction so I'll click OK and then close the region dialog and now I have two separate regions. These regions are non-overlapping although they are contacting. 
So if I wanted to create a simple pattern on that secondary region, I can go and I can select my pattern function and I can do a pattern about my origin. And in the angle, I now have the option to do an equation. So this is something that is new to version 15 as well. Click OK, and I now have my patterned region. The problem is I have my main region, but my patterned regions, you can see there's, there's overlapping uh, sections in those. So if I went back into JMAG Designer and I tried to generate a mesh, bad things would happen. This wouldn't work so well. In version 15, what I can do is I can do a Boolean for region, which means that I can take my main region and then I can subtract those secondary regions from it. This will again give me the nice single main region and the contacting but not intersecting and not overlapping secondary regions. If I go back into JMAG Designer, I can right click on the project and go to Import Geometry. With this geometry, I can now click on my main body and rename it as body. I can also hold down my shift key and then click on my outer regions, right click and then go to rename those as outer. And now in my assembly, I can create groups based on names. Then I can change the properties of these two different region groups and make my model look a little bit prettier. The next step that I would typically do is I create my studies. So my first study will be a transient analysis. And the first thing I would do in that study is I would apply my material data. So what I can do is I can choose from the material data that's in JMAG's database. And we have a lot of new additions from companies such as Hoganus, Arnold Magnetics, and VAC. So our material database is relatively comprehensive. At the same time, I can create new materials. So let's say I wanted to create a custom material and I wanted it to have a nonlinear BH curve. So I typically would click on that pencil and paper and I would start adding my BH points. 250, one Tesla, 300, 1.2, 500, 1.3. So if I show that graph, it's coarse, but it seems to look okay. Version 15 adds the ability now to display that graph, not just as a BH curve, but I can also look at the relative permeability or the gradient. So what we would see is that the gradient now is not decreasing. So that would typically throw an error or a warning if I would try to run this material in my JMAG analysis. JMAG Designer version 15 also gives us the ability to smooth that curve. So if I leave the default tolerance and go to smooth, what we see is that our BH curve gets a little bit smoother, but our gradient is still not decreasing monotonically. So what I have to go back in and do is drop the tolerance a little bit on that curve and then try smoothing there. So now my BH curve is much smoother and my gradient is monotonically decreasing. So what this has done is JMAG has gone through and has added some points and has smoothed that curve out. So as the tolerance goes up, what it's going to do is it's going to try to hold less tightly to the curve data points that I put in. So the tighter the tolerance, the more it's going to try to adhere to that, those data points. But in the end, what we do is we've added some nice data points and we've smoothed our curve. So for most materials, we can use this as a function to check whether or not our material properties are going to be okay or not. Beyond being able to smooth curves, version 15 also adds the ability to input individual hysteresis curves. So we can capture hysteretic behavior of our magnetic field analysis. JMAG does offer some materials that it in the database that are based on hysteresis tests that it has performed, or again, you can enter your own hysteresis curve data. After I go through and create the materials and apply them, then I can go, go forward and run the analysis. But at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back over to the presentation and go through some more slides in there. So jumping back into the presentation, effectively what that demonstration did was to go through some of the information that we have in the actual presentation. So we've done the demonstration showing the region boolean and pattern features, as well as the ability to input formulas in our dialog boxes in the geometry editor. I didn't demonstrate the merged geometry data, but effectively what this does is it allows us to save a model in the JMDL format and then merge it with another model saved in that same format. So we can merge different geometries together into a single geometry model. I also didn't demonstrate some of the added 2D constraints. There's just too many to go through, and you'll start to see these as you start working on models in the geometry editor on your own. In terms of modeling, 
What we've done is we've also demonstrated the ability to do magnetic field analyses with hysteresis. So we've talked a little bit about how we would set those hysteresis curves, and these functions would work in 2D transient response analyses. We've also looked at the check function of BH curves in the analytics. So again, if we enter custom BH curve, we have the ability to smooth data that's a little bit rough. This will help improve our results and eliminate the warning that says that JMAG results are not monotonically decreasing. I also didn't get into all the materials that were added. So now we have 459 types of permanent magnets and 238 types of core materials. We've also had Hoganis go through and replace their SMC in the database starting in version 14.1. The arbitrary positioning of LITS wires was also something that we didn't demonstrate because it's fairly self-explanatory, along with the ability to uh, use higher order elements in the electric field analysis. Effectively what this does is it improves the accuracy of the calculation while using still a coarser mesh, so we get to convergence much more quickly using those higher order elements. I also didn't demonstrate the eigenvalue analysis accounting for the initial stress. So this is something that's on our structural analysis solver and goes hand in hand with our abacus coupling function where we've improved the ability to do multi-domain analyses through abacus. The zooming analysis is something that we have on this demonstration, but I actually prefer the analysis that we talk about in our newsletter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the JMEG website and take a look at the example that we use in the newsletter. So I'm back over on the JMEG International website. And if we go to the technical library, JMEG Newsletter, we can find the current issue of the newsletter that was released in January of 2016. This current issue is going to have an introduction to JMEG Designer version 15. And in this introduction, we're going to see a lot of the features that we're covering today. At the same time, if we look at the example on the zooming analysis, it's a very, I find it to be a very useful analysis. So what we're going to do is the zooming analysis example is going to model an interior permanent magnet machine. And the full model is going to have a simplification of the individual slots. But we're going to have a smaller model that's going to have the individual strands located in those slots. So our full model is going to calculate the bulk performance and then apply those boundary conditions to our simplified model of the slots. So now we can still capture the overall performance of the machine as well as the individual current distribution inside the model. If we were to try to create a single model that captured the individual wire positions in the slot and then run that analysis, it would take about an hour. But with the zooming analysis, we can do this analysis in about 10 minutes. So the zooming analysis offers a way to simplify a model and then run that analysis much more quickly while still achieving a very high level of complexity in our results. So at this point, I'm going to take it back over and continue on in the presentation. So getting back into the presentation, we'll get into the mesher improvements. In the mesher, we can now specify a split direction in the thin solid mesh. This is an example of a transformer where the surface has a different material property than the core. The thin solid mesh will provide better accuracy when there are thin parts contacting much larger parts. In the manual mesher, you can specify the size of elements in a direction. This will give you the option to create unequal spacing. In terms of post-processing, it's a lot easier to show some of these functions in the actual JMEG model. So I'm going to switch back into JMEG Designer and open up the general IPM model. So I'm back in JMEG Designer and we're looking at our standard IPM motor model. This particular model is a parametric study with three separate cases. So if I go into my graph manager and I wanted to display the results for torque, I can go and I can sort by study type and result, and then I can find my torque for all three cases. If I click on the first case and then shift select the, the last case, I can go to create, and then I can display my torque values. The challenge is that we wouldn't know what these untitled cases are. But now in version 15, if I hover over that untitled case 1, I can get a little bit more information. So I can see this is untitled 1 from case 3 of my motor proof. Same for case 2 and case 1. At the same time, to make things a little bit clearer, I can go into my case control and show cases to look at my design table. I can now add labels in my design table that will automatically show up in my graph. So now if I display that torque, you can see untitled A, B, and C. Besides being able to more clearly define the, where the information is coming from, I can make nicer plots now. In version 15, I have a lot more control over how I'm setting up my axes and the titles for those different axes. So again, a little bit more ability to create better visual aids for my analysis results. You can see that this parametric study, I'm looking at my CAD parameters. So I'm changing some of the dimensions on my magnet width and my magnet thickness. 
In version 15, you can now see that if I highlight one of the CAD parameters, it will show me where that parameter is coming from or where that dimension is coming from. At the same time, if I go in and try to select more CAD parameters, once I select those parameters, I have the option of not just clicking OK, but I can do OK and then open up parametric parameters, open up my parametric cases, or I can open up my design table directly. So again, it makes it a little bit easier to set parametric properties. In that case control, once I go to select parameters, you can also see that I've gone through and I've created variables for my magnet thickness and my magnet width. This will come in handy a little, a little bit later. In the graph manager, we've also improved things like the FFT functionality. So if I wanted to do a FFT on my circuit voltage, I can do that Fourier transform and I can do it as a function of steps, time, or angle. So now instead of having to rely on knowing the end time, I can change it to the number of steps in my actual analysis. I click OK and it generates my FFT results. So now we have our table, which at 60 hertz we have a peak amplitude of 105 volts at 40 degrees. And you can also see that I have information on the actual calculation itself. So now I can actually get some data as to where this FFT result came from. Sometimes if you're just looking for the fundamental value from that FFT, you have some different options. So if I go in and I look at my circuit voltage, you can now see that it actually added that Fourier graph that I've just created. But if I go to show, we also have the ability to do a Fourier transform directly from our graph results. So we don't have to go into the graph manager in order to do a Fourier transform. So that's for the full transform. But what if I just want a single amplitude? If I go to my graphs and I go to show table, and I go to circuit voltage, now in my response data, I have the ability to do the harmonic amplitude of my first order, or my first harmonic order, which is basically the fundamental. If I click OK, this will give me that fundamental amplitude for all the different cases. So again, you can see that that 105 volts is what I pulled from my FFT. So if you're looking to do an analysis where you're looking at harmonic distortion or if you're looking at the other results from FFT data, you don't have to go through and do a full FFT transform. You can actually pull it into your response data. So remember where I said I had labeled or add variable names for my magnet thickness and my magnet width. In my response data, I can go through and I can actually create separate equations. So if I go to my response data, I can create an equation and I can use that variable that I've just called out in my magnet thickness and my magnet width. So I want to do a mag area and I want to have it be a function of width times thickness. And I click OK and now you can see that little fx. So I have a magnet area as my response data. So now let's say I go to my torque, show table, and I want an average value of torque in my response data as well. So torque, simple average, variable, torque, click OK, and then register that as response data. Now I can do a response table where I can look at my torque as an output, magnet area, and then my other materials. Same time, if I wanted to go through graph, I can do torque versus my magnet area. And now I can get a sense on how torque relates to my magnet area. Okay, so we've set up a parametric analysis. We have three cases, and let's say we go in into our conditions and we change our motion condition. Typically, I've used equations or I've used variables to define some of these parameters like speed. But let's say I go in and I change the value to 2500. When I click OK, previously what would happen is I would either have to delete all the results or duplicate the study. But what we can do is we can actually add this as a separate case. So now since we have a parametric study going, it'll create a fourth case where I change my speed. So again, making it a little bit easier to do parametric sweeps, parametric analyses, and then compile that data into a useful form. The last thing I wanted to demonstrate on the results is that we've added the inductance of our FEM coil. So if we have an FEM coil or an FEM conductor, we can automatically capture the inductance of the FEM coil, and we can now capture the flux linkages of FEM conductors. 
So at this point, we'll pop back over to the presentation and continue on there. So let's jump back into the presentation and talk about our post-processing section. We've actually seen a lot of these in the pre previous demonstration. So we've already seen that we had the enhanced graph display settings by being able to modify the different parameters of our graphs through our graph manager. We can also see the individual information about the individual results by hovering our mouse over the actual case. The Fourier transform has also been improved by being able to set the domain for the Fourier transform as not just time, but also the number of steps. We can also access the Fourier transform tool direct, directly through our graph results, and we can look at the result, pure harmonics of that Fourier transform from our response data. We've also seen how we can create user-defined formulas and add those to our response data. I didn't talk about the magnetic field calculation at arbitrary points since this is a fairly straightforward calculation. Effectively what happens is that JMA can calculate the magnetic flux density of an air region when applied to an external field. This can account for both the external field and magnetic field generated by magnetizing materials, and it calculates the magnetic flux density of the arbitrary point in the air region with an integration method. Going back into the parametric analysis section, we saw that we can hide parameters in our design table to make the design table look a little bit nicer. We also have the ability to highlight different CAD parameters and see what the, where those dimensions are coming from. Error messages will also be shown for overlapping part geometries. We can add case labels in our design table as well, and this will help improve our overall results display by having a little bit more information on the specific cases that generated those results. We can also add a case if we add to change a parameter. So previously in JMEG, if we changed a parameter, we would either have to duplicate the results or we would have to delete all the results. So now what JMEG does is it has the ability to add a case to our parametric analysis. In terms of optimization, this is again something that we're really pushing forward on. I don't want to spend a lot of time on optimization since there's a lot of different ground that I can cover. But what I will mention is that now in JMEG version 15, we do support multi-objective optimization using a genetic algorithm. So with that genetic algorithm, we can upload the data and, and create a Pareto curve. We also support linking with the MATLAB optimization toolbox. The results monitor has also been improved in JMEG Designer version 15. We can display the progress of each objective value in a multi-objective optimization. This should make calculating the results and seeing how, how the progress is going a little bit easier to do. We do have a correlation matrix added in version 15 as well. So again, a, a better way to display the data and look at a lot of results in a very simple fashion. And we have the ability to determine the Pareto curve. So we can find the Pareto front for our solution and plot that Pareto curve. We do have a generalized optimization link. So this is our link to either the MATLAB optimization tool or a separate DLL file. So this can be a custom optimization engine that you can use and run in JMAG Designer. So again, the JMAG Designer would control the results. The optimization engine would determine the model setup. So distributed processing and job processing. Now JMEG has the ability to run batch jobs from JMEG Scheduler. So we can run distributed processing of coupled analyses from JMEG Scheduler. We can import jobs by specifying the JProj file, and then we can run the distributed processing of analysis group cases from JMEG Scheduler. We also have improved settings for simultaneous jobs. So we can specify the job limitations appropriate for the job management system. Limitations on simultaneously run jobs when using LSF and PBS will also be removed. Finally, we have improved job state confirmation from clients. So we can confirm the state of jobs through LSF or PBS. We can terminate the jobs by registering scripts and describing the abort process of jobs, and we can confirm the job state currently running or ended with a client. Now, JMEG Explorer, as we said, we're starting to generate a lot of data. So we wanted to have a tool that could easily go in and look through data in terms of deleting and removing it. So now we have a model preview function. So we can view file details from the model image. When we're opening a JProj file or saving a JCF file, basic model information is automatically captured and is displayed in the information area. We can delete multiple file results at once. So now there's less time spent on organizing files and results. We can also view files to be deleted as a list before deleting them, and we support deleting and importing results only. In terms of customization, we all have a custom iron loss algorithm. 
So as I mentioned, JMAG has been working hard to develop its own internal iron loss calculation tool. At the same time though, you can create your own custom defined iron loss calculation and apply it to the model. So you can pull the results from the JMAG analysis and then run that in the, your own separate iron loss tool. We've had a big increase in the number of users using scripting. And so that's why the section on scripting in the user's manual has been improved. The description on scripts in the manual has been organized and can now easily be accessed. You can read the methods page described in how to use the script and describes the relationship between the class, upper operations, and JMEG designer, as well as the upper class. Now, JMEG RT. We've improved the interpolation accuracy of spatial harmonics models by adding a third order spline. So this third order spline will help to smooth the data instead of looking so jagged, now we'll have a nice smooth interpolated waveform. We've also added the accounting for leakage inductance. So now this leakage inductance in the coil calculation can change the results for our RT curves. In JMEG Express, we've already talked a lot about all the features that we've seen there. As I mentioned, we had the end ring cross section for the geometry of the induction machine. So now we can account for rectangular, trapezoidal, or a cross sectional area for our end ring. We also have the ability to hold over the number of slots and poles in our stator or rotor. So as I mentioned, instead of going back and defaulting to a default geometry, it'll try to maintain the geometry as best as possible. So if you have a 36 slot stator, it'll try to hold that number of slots and the rough dimensions if you modify the actual stator topology. We also have the ability to specify the number of decimal places in the dimensional kit. In that property tab, we can again specify the number of decimal places as well as the unit system that we would like to work with. We also have finally improved the display on the dimensions. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. I want to thank you for watching this webinar. And again, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact us directly 